Hey everybody, everybody, I'm back. It's Scott Gold. Today I am doing a little mukbang. I'm actually at Portillo's and I know I've talked about Portillo's before. I don't think I've ever done a mukbang here because it's usually too long of a line, but uh, I was in the area and the line was short, so I thought I'd bring you along with me. I'm on my way home from work. I haven't eaten all day. I'm super hungry, so let's get into it. I have a uh, one of my favorites. Now they're known for their hot dogs or Chicago style hot dogs, which are super delicious, but, but um, my favorite is the Italian beef sandwich. So I of course ordered that, which looks like this. I have a uh, jardinera for a little spice on top. I also got a french fries and of course <laughs> my cheese sauce I get pretty much everywhere that offers it and a chocolate cake shake which I've never had before but I've heard good things about so um <laughs> someone backing up their car is making it sounds like it's about to fall apart but let's give this a try first because it's a chocolate shake with their well known for their um their chocolate cake and i guess that's incorporated blended up chopped up in this shake so let's see how that is very chocolatey and as you'd imagine quite hard to suck through that straw <laughs> which is why i checked the bag before i left the drive through and i said let me just check is there a straw in here or a spoon or something and he said oh yeah it should be at the bottom yeah there was none so he said well which would you prefer i said both <laughs> i don't know how thick this thing's gonna be so always check your bag before you leave the drive through you regret it every time let's give this a try mm. Very, very good. Now they put a au jus sauce over it, you know, like a thin gravy. Um, and you can get it. This is regular, which is nice because it makes the bread nice and soft. Um, you can also get it, you know, light or dunked I think they call it which you know is good if you're sitting I guess at a table and have a knife and fork that would be very impossible to eat in a car so and you know I do most of my mukbangs in a car so <laughs> why change it now right so this is my 99th video and I'm almost at 400 subscribers, which is unbelievable to me. So I just picked something up and I'm gonna be doing my 100th video. Um, I hope to post it very soon, maybe on Saturday, because that will be my nine months of being on YouTube. So look for that. Um, and uh, I have something that I'm gonna be opening. So check back for that. My 100th video. I can't believe that. You know, there's so many nice people that I've met here and um, that have been so encouraging. I never would have done this without them. and. Um, with their encouragement and support and you know the encouragement and support of almost 400 people now so super grateful for each and every one of you out there that have left a kind comment and supported me watched videos thank you very much 
So in the true, you know, style of Scott Gold, I'll of course have a story for you <laughs> while I eat. You know, I was talking to my friend Ron, whose channel here is Life with Ron, and he's on vacation right now and posting all kinds of really awesome videos from Philadelphia. And uh, he's become such a great friend and support to me and just love him. And uh, I said, oh, well, you know, when you're there, what are you going to do? And we were talking and of course I knew he'd be making tons of videos and that's been great to watch. It's like living vicariously. <laughs> through him uh, taking a vacation when I'm not. So everybody go check out all of his videos he's done. Um, I'm sure you'll have many more to come. He's got a while yet on his vacation and um, he's did a really cool vi video of a uh, prison that they, an old, you know, prison that's decommissioned and uh, made some cool videos there. So really fun to watch. When I was talking to him about a uh, time I was in New Orleans and one of the things that we decided to do just on the on a whim walking past there was a um, mule ride. <laughs> now this is going to sound funny. Like a horse-drawn carriage but instead of a horse they used mules and instead of it being like a carriage for like you know four people or whatever it was like a wagon you know with a bunch of seats and stuff like that. So We said, you know, why not and what the hell. <laughs> we'll do a little ride. And it was, um, you know, supposed to point out various touristy attraction, attractions or things that were noteworthy about the French Quarter. And I think it was like a 20 or 30 minute little, you know, cruise around the French Quarter. So... I was, there was four of us, and then there was also another party that was aboard the wagon, uh, and two, two other people. So there was, uh, we, uh, some room left, you know, but we take off on the, on the journey, and the guy that's driving the, uh, mule says that the mule's name is Bojo. So... He's pointing out various attractions and, oh, I forget there was a celebrity who, you know, had a, a home there and he wanted, it was pointing him out and there was a woman that wanted to see Brad Pitt's house. And <laughs> so the guy that, that was driving the horse said, you know, okay, we'll take you past that. And I don't know if we were on a little bit of a different route then because we, this woman asked to see something that wasn't on the, you know, normal route, but we get going and, uh, it was pretty uneventful until we head down this narrow street. And of course, you know, it's a city, so it's, you know, cars lining both sides of the street. They're narrow, old streets and up ahead, there is a dumpster parked on the side of the street, and workers are on the roof of a building, and they are shoveling off, like, shingles or roofing material and throwing them down, like, at least two, three stories down into the dumpster. So the horse is going along, and a pile of roofing material comes flying off the roof into the dumpster. It scares this mule buck wild <laughs> literally <laughs> it rears up on its hind legs and starts taking off and we get to this intersection it starts backing up and if you've ever backed up a trailer you know that that's not something that's easy so it starts jackknifing 
we go over the curb backwards and the wagon is headed right for a plate glass window of a restaurant. And this driver is trying to gain control, but the horse is so scared, the mule is so scared that it's really not able to do it. Now, some passerbys, who I'm assuming must have known something about horses, actually reaches up the bridle and tries to calm it down, and it was working. But it seemed like the driver took exception to that because, you know, how dare anybody imply, I guess, that he didn't have control of the mule. You know, he was like, yelling at them, get away, get away. And the horse had been, the mule had been getting calmer when they were trying to help, but it just, the yelling and the commotion startled it even further. So the wagon was like tipped because it was a very tall curb, like well over a foot. So we didn't know what to do because it wasn't like you could just jump off. I mean, there was uh, six of us on there. I think you had to get off in one area and there was a big wheel there and you kind of had to maneuver around and you sort of had to put your hand on that wheel to get off, which you didn't want to do when this thing is moving and you don't know what this this horse is going to do. He didn't have control over it. So I said, you know, should we, should we jump off of this thing? And I was like, I, you know, nobody knew what to do. So we, rather than get hurt getting, jump, you know, jumping off of this or into traffic or something, we stayed put and just hoped to God this wasn't going to overturn because that was an absolute possibility that could happen at any moment. So he has like, I don't know, like a, uh, like a whip kind of a thing. And he's trying to, you know, get control over this, this mule. And uh, of course that only made matters worse because it took off charging like a full gallop and he's trying to rein it in we go through an intersection and are almost hit by three different cars because we didn't have the right of way <laughs> so it was just we're gonna die one way or another on this damn mule ride today you know i mean either we're gonna overturn and like have our necks broken we're going to be pulled out into traffic uh, or something is gonna take us out. So we're charging through the back streets. <laughs> People are staring like in disbelief because you, you would think maybe this happens, you know? I don't think so, you know, because everyone looked very, as shocked as we were in the back of that damn thing. <laughs> so Somehow he ends up calming it down to a level that he's able to gain somewhat control. So there's the area that we had loaded on, like kind of, it's almost like a cab stand or something where various horses and carriages were standing waiting for tourists that wanted to ride. And he gets it to stop and we just jump off like so happy to be out of that thing you know I mean I practically kissed the ground like the Pope when I got off of that so we're just like oh thank god you know it's over <laughs> I don't know how much we paid for that horror ride but we were just glad so the driver says to another carriage driver there Hey, this, you know, horse, this mule went <laughs> buck wild and uh, they didn't get a good ride. Would you take them for the rest of the ride? And honestly, at this point, we were just like, oh, no, 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 that's fine. What's fine? We had enough, you know. But I guess we were kind of young at the time and foolish. <laughs> I should have just said no. But they were insistent and this guy was really funny and then the one that was taking us on the second ride he was like oh that guy's crazy you know he he doesn't know what he's doing you know i've been doing this for 30 years and and the of course that woman from 
the front of the carriage was still with us and she still wanted to see Brad Pitt and the driver said to his wife who was like taking the money and stuff and staying at the cab stand like well we're gonna be gone for a while because she want to see that damn Brad Pitt <laughs> so I don't even remember if we saw Brad Pitt's house or not or what it looked like um, but what I do remember is that midway through this ride, which was very nice and relaxed, slow paced, the guy was very knowledgeable, pointing out various sites and was very funny. And we actually had a really good time. And all of a sudden we see a charging carriage, like a bat out of hell. It was Bojo <laughs> back at, back at it, you know? up to no good, running full out. And the driver was alone this time, luckily, but he had long hair and a ponytail. And I remember the ponytail was just straight out, flapping in the breeze as this mule was at a full gallop. And the driver was just like, that mule crazy. <laughs> mm hmm We were like, yeah, we know. <laughs> So, the moral of the story, I guess, is if you're ever in New Orleans <laughs> and you think it might be nice to take a mule ride, <laughs> you can do that, but make sure that the mule's name is not Bojo, otherwise you'll be in for quite a hellacious ride. <laughs> well, that... Italian beef was super good. Now, Portillo's was always a Chicago original, you know, dating back many, many years. And uh, now I know that it's been purchased and it's a publicly held company now, traded on the New York Stock Exchange, and they uh, have expanded quite a bit to other markets. They started with a lot of places that were, you know, places that Chicago transplants find themselves, like Florida, Arizona, um, I know that they had some in California, um, some different places, but it appears that they have expanded quite a bit, which is good for everyone else because they get to have some yummy Chicago-style hot dogs and Italian beef. But it's almost a little like, I don't know, I have mixed feelings about it because it's almost like, well, that was a Chicago original, you know, that was something that was just here, you know, but I'm glad that everybody can try it because it's very good. You definitely pay for it. They um, have certainly raised their prices where, as most places have, but such is life at this point, I guess. So anyways, I don't want to keep you too long. I just wanted to come on and have, long, uh, have dinner and hope everyone is having a wonderful summer get out and enjoy it. It will be gone before you know it. So if you haven't subscribed yet, it's not too late. If you have, welcome to the family. I love you for watching.